this one I, I should or will enjoy doing the most because Joe Paul Senior, um, Joe Paul, was my actual mentor. He was the one I met and knew first. I was a good friend of his son. Um, in the, early on in the boxing career, I was a good friend of Joe, and uh, it was through him I, I, I actually met an awful lot of the the other main players. Then going being in his company a lot, you know the. Tony Lambrianos and the Charlie Richardsons and the Roy Shores and the, all them, you know, it was through Joe that I ended up getting, becoming good friends with um, Charlie Bronson. Yeah, um, I've, I've been away with Joe, we've been abroad together. We've actually, actually, we went to Gibraltar once, then Joe, I can't tell you what for. We went there once, and as soon as we landed and got into the airport, I don't know how he knew, I don't know how he knew, but he went, it's on us. Right, it's on us. Well, you know where you're going? Split up now. And just walked off. And we all had to go, pew, pew. <laughs> wow. And I'm in Guernsey. But just, it was just a really, and it was, it was on us. It was on us. We all got in different cabs and, you know, it, it was on us. He's just, he's just a fantastic mentor. He, another prime example of be nice. Mr. Unlicensed Boxing himself. Joe Pyle's colourful career stretched back to the 60s and his days running gambling clubs in Soho and hanging out with the number one family in New York. You name it, and Joe was involved in it. Joe was the guy people wanted to be seen with, hanging out with the likes of Diana Dawes, Oliver Reed, Joe Lewis and Reggie Cray back in the day, and that's just to name a few. Right, people loved him. They actually, you know, big scary people loved him. He just humbled you in every in every department he just humbled you right and and, and, a, and a brain of of um who he knew you know i should have mentioned that second to none you know what i mean my one was good his one was four times my one you know what i mean his one was good he knew everyone everywhere from you know american rappers to you know and he, he was he was he was something to do with a Death Row um, record label, yeah, and uh, another good friend of his here, big in the music industry, that, um, don't know if he'd want me to mention it, Ryan on Records and that, but big up to you. And and I, I, was, I was at a disagreement, they called me into a disagreement in the recording studio once with Mark Morrison and Smiley Culture and Joe and me trying to sort of stop these two bouncing chests off each other and all that, you know. Um, I've, got, I've got some fantastic stories with Joe. Like, but if you want to know his realness, uh, I'm not saying he was the archangel because there is incidences such as um, in a certain nightclub in the West End one day, um, Joe um, and two other gentlemen walked into a little room and there was a gunshot and only two people walked out, one of them being Joe. And they didn't run away, they weren't, you know, when they was questioned, this, all he said was, I didn't shoot him, and I didn't see who did. And all Johnny said to him was, I didn't see who shot him, and I certainly didn't shoot him. So, so they can't give them both life. They can now, change the law, but they can't give them both life. There's one shot, one finger, one trigger. Right, so they know only one person killed him. And they can't put two people away because I know it was one of you. So they both had to walk. How cool is that? The police got their revenge on Joe when he was sent down for 12 years following a carefully planned sting involving a kilo of heroin, something Joe had never been involved with before. Joint enterprise, I think, which means if seven of us go into a chip shop and one person that I'm with has a row and stabs someone to death, right? We all get life. Right? Go and check it out. Go and goggle that on your thing. Yeah? If you run away and don't stand there and grass up everyone that was with you, if you run away, it's called joint enterprise and you all get life. Go and check that one before you go out of anyone tonight. Check their pockets because if they're carrying a chiv, they could be costing you 15 years if they go like that. Yeah? You get a 10 or something. So you want to check that out. That might, that might help out 
uh, some of this anti-knife crime thing as well, you know. But um, they definitely changed that law after Joe, yeah. <laughs> he changed the law there. He, he was also uh, the instigator behind the Roy Shaw phenomena and the Lenny McLean fights, you know, the, the battle between them two. He was the promoter and the manager of, of, of Roy, and he... When... It, it, I'm only talking me personally, right? I'm not actually talking the views of the world, but when that man died, what left the criminal element was the glue. Yeah, he was the glue that held all them different little parties of people as one big unit, as the firm. Yeah, he held that together as the firm, one big unit. Yeah, and when he died, and and to keep it like that, he would have Caesars, yeah, the Caesars nightclub, the, the, the boxing every every six weeks. A genuine excuse for all the naughty boys around England to come and have a meeting in one. You know, he made that happen. He put the show on. He was the glue. He done all that. And when he died, divide and conquer. Yeah, that's the first rules of war. And the war against crime, they would just get little splinter groups to break away from them or get them to argue with them or get them to argue with them. And little minorities, they can beat when you're one big mess that's hard so he died the glue went out of the crime um little circle and it all splintered off into little groups where they're arguing with each other on the fucking computer and he's not talking to him and he's not talking to him and so he went in that world he come from a very romantic world he was always impeccably dressed the beautifully suits yeah lovely children you know he was he was the one that died with a few quid in the bank you know most of them end up being skinned he was a star man.